Hey guys, the folks over at Canakit sent over a Raspberry Pi 4 Max starter kit. And I thought in this video, we would just take a couple of minutes to unbox it, go through all the parts, put it together, and just make sure everything works. So uh, without uh, too much introduction here, let's go ahead, jump over to my desktop and get this thing put together. Okay guys, so here we are on my desk. Here we've got the uh, Canakit uh, packaging here. Looks like we've got the four gig uh, max version of the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. First thing we're gonna see here uh, is uh, just a little welcome card. Uh, thanks for buying Canakit stuff. Uh, here we've got a little instructions on read me first. We'll come back to that. Uh, looks like here we have an SD card um, that should be pre-formatted uh, with uh, some version of Raspbian, I believe. Uh, so we've got a couple of HDMI uh, cables here with uh, just a standard plug on one end and a micro plug on the other. Uh, so that looks good. I'm glad that they included two of those. Um, can I kit a USB card reader here? Um, so that will be uh, handy probably for something. Um, I've already, actually already got one that I use quite a bit um, and it's USB 3. I don't know. Yeah. And this one, this one's only USB 2. So I will probably just use my USB 3 uh, adapter here. <clears throat> okay. So it looks like we've got, well, let's go over here. It looks like this is going to be uh, the case. Um, so let's, let's see if we can't focus this a little better. The wrong way, there we go. Raspberry Pi 4 case. So let's take a quick look here. All right, oops, there we go. Looks like it's branded Kanakit there, that looks good. This is open actually because um, on the inside, we can install uh, a little teeny fan here um, and power it on uh, the Raspberry Pi. Everything here looks really nice. I like this case quite a bit, actually. It looks like you can mount it. Uh, some mounting holes here on the bottom, lots of ventilation. That's good. Uh, very cool. Dig the case. Um, let's come over to, uh, let's look at this stuff first. Um, actually, really stoked to see this. Uh, this is uh, an extension for USB uh, C adapter here right on both ends um, but it also has a power button and i really do dig that uh, having a power button on there will be really really handy and here we've got a power supply and some heat sinks um, and it looks like this is a usb type c power supply so that's really good i'm glad that's kind of the direction everything is going now uh, so we can get uh, some USB uh, type C, oops, focus, there we go. So yeah, USB type C there, almost focused. There we go. Uh, looks like we've got, wow, 5.1 volts at two and a half, or sorry, three and a half amps there. Uh, so quite the power draw, um, but I would rather have it be overpowered than underpowered. And oh, here is that little fan that I was talking about earlier um, that will mount inside of the Raspberry Pi case. So we'll come back to that. Um, and then a, a quick start guide here. Uh, I'm sure I will come back and look at that at some point. Uh, I believe it's got some like pinouts and things like that. So you can tell uh, what pins do what, that sort of thing. Um, yep, so like right here, I'll be powering that fan uh, on pins four and six, um, but we'll come back to that. And here we've got our Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with the uh, four gigs of RAM option there. So let's, I haven't even opened this yet. Oops, let's, uh, there we go. So there is our Raspberry Pi 4. That looks really good. And then um, just some get it started stuff here. So let's take a quick look around here. Obviously, let's start on this end. So we've got uh, a couple of USB 2 ports, a couple of USB 3 ports. 
gigabit LAN. I'm really stoked to see this. Having a 10100 on uh, the older, the Raspberry Pi 3 models, uh, like I've got here, um, having a 10100 wasn't quite satisfactory in my opinion. Um, so I'm glad that they went with a gig here. Also, you'll notice that a Raspberry Pi 4 won't fit in a Raspberry Pi 3 case because of this. This is obviously uh, mirror imaged. And then of course, uh, over here on the sides, a lot of this is similar, but you'll notice we've got a USB uh, type C and two micro HDMI ports. This does support uh, dual output for display here. Um, so those, uh, I mean, four things, the mirror image and then all of the connectors on this side means I can't put this Raspberry Pi in this Raspberry Pi 3 case. So that's, I understand, but it's, uh, it's kind of sad that you gotta do something completely different there. Um, obviously, uh, we've still got uh, connections for a camera, for a display. We've got our 40 GPIO pins. Uh, we've actually got uh, this, uh, these four right here uh, with a hat you can put on here. You can actually power this over Ethernet. That's a PoE port uh, or, or pins there. Um, so overall, it looks really good, I think. Okay, guys, so I think I've got everything that I need to get uh, all of this put together, except some better focus on that camera. Okay, so uh, first things first, let's take this case apart. Um, let's see, I think this pushes out, so that's good. And then we're just gonna slide this in, I believe. I believe that's gonna go under. That looks about right. So you actually gotta slide this corner up under there, and then we can take this. Oh, that fits in there really, really well, like so. Another angle over here. Yeah, that looks really good. And then, of course, we're going to want to put... Right, like that. Yeah, so... Uh, now we want to put the fan in here. So I think what I'm going to do, let's see, I want to go this way. Should be able to just push that down like so. And that'll fit in there. And then we want to make sure that we get pins uh, four and four and six up here. So let's get uh, the red pin or the red one on four. Focus, like so, and the ground on six. Like so. Let's go over here, push that down. Good deal. And now that we've got all of this put together, I can take this card and just slide it right in there. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't put that card in there until you've got everything put together. So uh, that all being said, let's go ahead and plug this in and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so here we are with the uh, Raspberry Pi 4, uh, 4 gig max with our power plugged in. We've got uh, an HDMI plugged in going into the capture card, uh, wireless mouse, wired keyboard, ethernet. And I think with all that being said, or all that, yeah, I think with all that being said, we are good to go. All right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and push the power button, and we'll wait for the signal to pop up on our display here. I may have to uh, manually go in here and uh, give the capture card a bit of a push. Let's do that. And uh, see if we get, there we go, that looks really good first boot that's what we like to see uh, like i said it is uh, that 64 gig card is uh, set up with noobs by default um, so we're going to go ahead and go through there we go yep okay so we're going to do that um Nope, I think that's pretty much everything we need there. Can I switch this to English US? Yay, glad to see that. 
Let's do Wi-Fi networks. Let's see. Oh, actually, I don't need a Wi-Fi network because I am plugged in via Ethernet. Um, oh, and then right there, obviously, where it says install. Uh, I've got everything there that I think I want. Um, yep, so we'll go ahead and click install. Saying, yeah, everything here is going to be overwritten. That's fine. Uh, that's what we're here for. And now we're just going to hang out and wait. Uh, let this do its thing. I imagine it'll take a few minutes, uh, but we'll just come back when all of this is done. Okay, guys, so there we are just a few minutes later. Uh, looks like the OS is uh, installed successfully. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then it should reboot uh, and we'll see. Nope. I thought I might have to kind of give my uh, input or my capture card a little bit of a boot there, but uh, everything seems to be going smoothly. So that's good. Uh, so we'll go ahead and give this just a second to, uh, to boot up. And hopefully here in a minute we'll be on our desktop. And of course, every time we've got a new first boot, uh, it will always take longer than subsequent boots. Um, so just know that, um, yes, uh, that did take a second, but not too bad. And it will only get better from there. Man, I hate this mouse. Country, need to switch this. Time zone is all wrong there. Set that. That's pretty close to me. That's all fine. And we'll click next. That super slow motion with uh, the, the mouse cursor, uh, that's the mouse that I've got plugged in. Has nothing to do with the Raspberry Pi, uh, just so you know. Um, Yep, it sure is showing black borders around the desktop. Next. Don't need to do that since I'm plugged in. We'll do next. Let's see if it's got any updates for us. Okay guys, so after uh, a few minutes of running updates, uh, it looks as though everything here is up to date. So let's go ahead and click OK. Uh, and it wants us to restart, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, and just like that, we're rebooted back into our desktop. It looks like it fixed the black border issue, so that's all good to go. Uh, let's jump onto the internet just real quick um, and make sure that we uh, are getting that full gig connection. Let's just see uh, what happens if I run a network or a, an internet speed test. Oops, there we go. Let's go to fast.com. Yeah, that looks about right. Ooh, that doesn't, but we do have a good connection, so I'm not gonna complain too much about any of that. So we'll go ahead and close out here. And then the other question I've got is what happened with all of that SD card space? How did it handle that? All right, so it looks like it, we had 56 gigs uh, with about 47 gigs free. Uh, so that looks about right. Um, we're missing a few gigs there, it looks like, but formatting and and swap space and all that kind of stuff, of course, will take up some of that. So it looks like everything here is good to go. And now we can actually start using the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, guys, so there you go. There is the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig starter kit. Uh, thank you so much to Canakit for sending this over for me to check out. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to put it all together, kind of walk you through all the pieces that you would get in that kit. Um, and if you want to pick one of these up, I will have links in the description down below where you can pick one of these up for yourself. Um, if you've had a Raspberry Pi 3 and you're thinking about getting a 4, definitely look at getting a 4. They do come in 1, 2, and 4 gig uh, kits for 
uh, RAM capacity there. Of course, the more RAM you've got, probably the more you'll be able to do with it. So uh, again, I will have links to everything in the description down below where you can pick one of these up. And I want again, I want to thank Canakit for being awesome and sending this over to me. Uh, I will be making more videos uh, with this kit, um, just doing some different things uh, around the house, setting up like an open media vault server, uh, maybe a pie hole server. Uh, we'll try a few different things with this, test it out, do some stress tests, that sort of thing. All of that's coming up in different future videos. So uh, if you're interested in any of that, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you found this video helpful or informative or whatever, uh, do me a favor, thumbs up, helps the channel a ton. So uh, with all that said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.